Since 2018, the TCL6 series has been a great value for a 4K HDR TV. Now fast forward two years and we have the new version. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And behind me, I have the 2020 TCL 6 series, which is new for the year with great features for next gen gaming. So in this video, we're going to unbox it and see what it's all about. Stick around. Not only is this box with the 55 inch pretty small, it's also pretty light. Must be all that working out that I haven't been doing. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into this box, set it up, and see what we got. So first we have the packaging with the power cable and remote as well as the getting started guide, batteries and screws for the feet. Then we have other either boomerangs or the two feet. I'm guessing it's the feet. Alright. There's a lot of padding so it's well protected while shipping. It has some padding for the front of the screen so there's pretty thick cardboard as well as styrofoam surrounding it. Now let's get this box off and see what we have inside. This can go. <laughs> All right, so there's nothing else in the box. The next step is to just install the feet. Next, we'll use the box as a flat surface to rest the TV on so we can install the stand. And to get the box rigid, we just use the styrofoam that came in it as structural support. So we have two spots to install the legs and it actually gives you illustration to say that the stands actually act as cable channels. You can route the cables from this side through here so it is basically invisible to the eye, which is pretty cool. The TV is available in a 55, 65 and 75 inch screen size. It supports HDR10, Dolby Vision and HLG Hybrid Log Gamma HDR standards. It does not support HDR10+. It's a 4K panel with a 120Hz refresh rate with a mini LED backlight system. It has 120 local dimming zones in this 55 inch version and goes up to 240 local dimming zones in the 75 inch version. It has 4 HDMI 2.0 ports with HDMI 2.1 features like VRR, ALLM, QFT and EARC. Because the HDMI ports are HDMI 2.0 compliant and don't have the full bandwidth of HDMI 2.1, the TV will not be able to accept a 4K 120Hz signal from the HDMI ports but instead will be limited to 1440p at 120Hz. It has the new THX certified game mode for enhanced game performance and has TCL's AIP Cube picture processor. The TV also runs the Roku Smart OS in the US. So the first thing it does when initially turning on is it pairs the remote. Now it asked me to do it, but it did it automatically once I pressed down on the remote. So that's good to know. English, United States, for home use, of course. So you set the region and whether it's for home or business, and of course it'll be home. Then you select your Wi-Fi network to set it up. And once you put in your password, it checks the connection. Oh, interesting. So the first thing it does it is it checks for a new firmware, but as of right now, there is no new one available. So it takes you directly to setting up Roku using your phone. Now you'll definitely have to have a Roku account to set up a Roku TV. It's just how they designed it. On your phone, it's going to ask you if you want to input a payment method. You don't have to do that at that moment, if you want to add a payment method, you can just skip this step and proceed to actually setting up the TV. So once you go through the setup on your phone, it basically add all the channels that you've selected. So if you say you wanted to add Disney Plus or Showtime or Pandora, it adds those channels after you have done selecting what you want on your phone.
Now we go to connect to the devices. Now I have the receiver, the Denon X4700H connected to this TV as well as a cable box and I have an Xbox connected to the receiver. HDMI 1 has nothing so we can select that. HDMI 2 has the cable box and HDMI 3 has nothing and HDMI 4 which is the EARC port has the AV receiver. And press right and we are all done. So this is the Roku home screen. All right, so I just got this TV, so of course I haven't done much tests to see exactly what it's capable of. And going forward, I'll be doing all the tests that I do with the TVs that I review. So I'll be testing blooming, viewing angles, full array local dimming, all of that. So make sure to come back for that. So first impressions, this TV, the design at least, is really good. Um, so it's a very minimalistic and modern design. It's very angular too. So it gives it that modern look and the feet are wide set. So your stand will have to be on the wider side. But I think the 65 inch version actually has the option to put the feet closer together so you can put it on a smaller stand. And the picture, it gets very bright and it's vivid and the colors are punchy. So I really like how the picture looks. You can actually see it right now. It has 120 full array local dimming zone. So it's 15 across and eight vertically. And it uh, consists of mini LEDs, not the traditional LEDs that you find in uh, other LCD TVs. So because of that, TCL is touting the TV's brightness and I'd say it's pretty convincing because so far, just based on my initial impressions, it gets very bright. And of course, the TV have HDMI 2.0 ports, but those ports have HDMI 2.1 features like EARC, auto low latency mode, VRR, and new for any TV really is THX certified game mode. So I'm very interested in testing all of these. So I actually have the Denon X4700H receiver right down here, which is an HDMI 2.1 receiver. I'm currently in the process of reviewing that right now. So I actually want to combine them to see just how well they work together and also combine that with the Xbox One X to see just how cohesive that experience is for gaming. And you'll be able to see that in the gaming demo. So there'll be the gaming demo, the screen test, and of course the full review. And let me know if you also want to see a comparison of this TV because I also have the Samsung Q90T QLED TV which is Samsung's flagship 4K TV for 2020 so let me know if you want to see a comparison between those in the comments and I could make it happen. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time this has been your friend the neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.